Caitlin Martin, September 7th, 2022. This is my Unit 1 presentation for Genetics 1040. This is a summary of genetic-based methods for agricultural insect pest management by Nina Alfrey and Michael B. Bonzel in the 2018 article for agricultural and forest entomology. This article is focused on solving the problem of chemical resistant pests in agriculture in order to optimize the production of food worldwide. It is expressed by the writers that it is more important than ever to explore alternative methods for pest control as genetic control of pests is establishing field success as of late. The four areas focused on in regards to genetic-based control mentioned in the article are as follows. Firstly, the SIT or sterile insect technique, a method in which a population of sterile insects is released into a wild population, thus competing for mates and lowering the pest population overall. SIT programs typically release both male and female insects. This is ineffect ineffective because they tend to mate with one another instead of the native pest species. Male-only releases are far more effective by three to five times. In addition, separating the sexes of sterile insects early on saves in cost. Only the sex intended for use will be housed and fed. Secondly, female-only lethality engineered into the agricultural pest themselves this method appears to require both lower numbers of insects released than sit and smaller refuges. Being advantageous both in limiting the waste of crops and refuges and in the effort required to rear and release sterile insects. The insects are genetically modified and while in captivity they are fed a diet that doesn't allow the expression of genes that would prove lethal. Once these insects are released, they breed with native populations, and then the lethal genes can be expressed. The third method is the use of transgenic crops that express an insecticidal toxins. This method has been used for some time, although toxin resistance is of concern. The primary resistance management method is a high dose refuge strategy. Toxin-free crops act as a refuge for pests and prevent resistance to the insecticidal toxins from being present in the entire population. If there was not a refuge for the breeding of pests, the only ones that would survive to pass on their genetics would be resistant to the pesticides produced by transgenic crops. The trade-off of having this refuge is that while it requires to sacrifice an area, expecting limited or no yield, we gain long-term stability and that we can utilize this method of pest control long-term without having to increase toxins until it is unsustainable. The fourth pest control method is the mass release of toxin-sensitive engineered males carrying female lethal genes. By allowing the proliferation of genetically modified toxin-sensitive insects, the native population will mate with said modified insects and thus become more susceptible overall to toxins used to control the, pep the pest population. Though subsequent waves of these insects, we can expect to prolong the effective use of toxins and avoid access use as well as lessen the amount of refuge crop space required. The article details policy considerations as well as the intent of taking genetic manipulation into field implementation. Whether discussing the use of genetically modified organisms in any instance, risk must be ass assessed. And the U EU member states are required to evaluate this risk before the deliberate release of GMOs. It is generally accepted that Weighing risk and reward when utilizing GM insects as opposed to GM plants is much more difficult because control of agriculture, agricultural pests is critical to sustaining the human population. The authors have no doubt that it will be handled with the greatest of care and we will continue to make advances in its use.